something to Glenn. Glenn was talking about Sunday. I could barely hear you on Sunday, Glenn, so I don't know where you were or what you were doing, but, uh, yeah, you weren't making it in here on Sunday on our net. So, Bob, um, first up on the list is WB6RLC, and that's, of course, Glenn down there in Cathedral City, followed by uh, KB7LOQ, Art in St. George, and then our very own Max, KJ6HN in Darwin. And then we got Phil, N6WHK, Whiskey Hotel Kilo, down south in uh, San Diego area, followed by Ron, K2RP, uh, down in that same general area. So, uh, I'll copy? Yeah, just fine. Go ahead. All right, then we have a newcomer, um, and if we follow our rules, <laughs> we want to move him up towards the uh, beginning a little bit, and that'll be Kilo 6 Lima, Lima Oscar, K6LLO. His name is Lee, <clears throat> and he's located in Menifee. So uh, there you go. And he does have some vintage gear, but he's not currently running it. So uh, anyway, keep that in consideration that he's a newcomer. Uh, followed by uh, WA9JIB, Bob. WA9JIB and K6ZSR. Uh, Mike up there in Santa Barbara, K6ZSR. And then, of course, uh, my better half, uh, Lisa, KF6QNG. And, and we'll talk about where to, you might as well put us together somewhere on the list. Um, <clears throat> so KF6QNG. And then uh, we got uh, NY6L, November Yankee 6, Lima J. And bringing up the rear is uh, K6LGL Skip. So that's what I've got so far. And I'll take a break and see if there's anybody else who'd like to get on the list. And then I'm going to hand this over to you. And if you want to start a little early, we can do that. Uh, anybody else who'd like to get on the uh, list for the Vintage Single Sideband Roundtable, this is W6DQ. I'm hearing nothing, Bob. You want to take it over? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take it, and uh, you're both sounding good. Let me see. I'm going to put you right before, you and Lisa, right before Phil, uh, N6WHK. It'll, you'll be number uh, uh, four and five. Is that okay? Right after KJ6HN. That's perfect. That works just fine. Thanks, Bob. Okay, and great signal today. Uh, W6DQ, QNG. All right, we got you. Okay, name here is Bob. We're in Fallbrook, California, uh, which is down by Oceanside, California, about a mile and a half south of the Camp Pendleton uh, Marine Base here. 160,000 Marines uh, just uh, north of us and uh, hopefully keeping us pretty safe. And uh, the signals are pretty good tonight. 80 meters seems to be good and uh, running well. And uh, I will start the net in probably about four minutes here. I'll call and see if anybody else wants to get on. And I've got, uh, let's see, it looks like about 14 people tonight. Should be a nice, cozy net. And does anybody else uh, want to get on the list? Uh, give me a call now and see if I can hear you. Go ahead. I was hoping that W6YEC would call in, but I heard, I heard he's been on back on the air, so that's good. And uh, I did not hear uh, Phil's report on it, but uh, uh, the reports that I've heard on the grapevine have been good, so uh, that's great. Well, I uh, unfortunately missed last week. I had uh, that, uh, I was supposed to do early last week. I apologize for not being here. And I uh, got good uh, to go to a, a July 4th uh, a fireworks party about 5 o'clock, and I just didn't forget. I forgot about it, so apologize for that. And it uh, won't happen again until next July 4th. Hi, hi. Okay, so we got a bunch of people tonight, and uh, I did think of a good question, a philosophical question tonight, So, but I'm not going to tell you that what it is uh, until we get there. So uh, let's see, we've got, uh, I've got 658, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll ask one more time, anybody want to get on the list, and then we'll read the preamble. Over. 
Okay, well, you can always join later, and a welcome to the uh, uh, the new fellow, Lee, uh, K6LLO. I used to know W6LLO very well up in the Bay Area. He and I were RTTY uh, uh, buddies, and so it'd uh, be interesting to know uh, uh, a little bit of history about, you, about your call. In fact, I'm going to put you, I'm going to put you number three, uh, um, uh, right after uh, KJ, actually after KJ, uh, KJ 6 a I'm going to put you number three as a new person. I don't think I'll put you as number one because it's kind of intimidating unless you um, uh, have been, at least you've heard a couple other people first. So you're going to be number three. I'm going to call you right after uh, KJ, actually I'm going to call you after uh, yeah, KJ 6 a Okay. And then uh, next will be w 6 q and kf 6 q and g Okay. So let's read the uh, vintage single sideband preamble here. And for the, for the new person, I'm going to read the longer version tonight. So bear with me for a second. So this is my uh, copy of it. Welcome, everybody, to the Vintage Single Sideband Roundtable. This is Bob, AK6R, and uh, I'm here in Fallbrook, California, Southern California, about uh, 30, 30 miles uh, north of San Diego, out in the uh, country here. we got a couple acres out here, lots of antennas, and uh, it's nice and quiet uh, radio-wise. I'm going to be the host for uh, tonight's uh, roundtable, and I'm using vintage equipment. I'm using a Cantronics KT-180. Uh, driving a, uh, a flex uh, linear amplifier, and we're putting out looks like about 900 watts. So, not a lot of power, but enough to uh, make a difference. We meet every uh, Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. with an informal gathering, usually around 6:30 p.m. Pacific time, uh, to record uh, early check-in uh, lists, and that, that will be relayed to the host, which is in this case uh, me tonight. The roundtable meets on or about 38.95 kilocycles or kilohertz for your new folks. Plus or minus, depending upon whether the frequency is occupied or QRM is present, or there's any variation in our vintage of VFOs. I am zero beated with my uh, ICOM 7800, so I should be right on uh, right on frequency. You can zero beat to me. Uh, to check into this roundtable, you must be using a radio that was manufactured on or before 1980, or homebrewed uh, uh, with a uh, radio with equivalent technology. Transistor tube or hybrid radios are all welcome, as they were manu if they were manufactured in 1980 or before. However, if you're a first-time check-in, and that's you, uh, Lee. Uh, you may use a modern radio for the purpose of inquiring about joining this group and obtaining a vintage radio. And I'm sure there'll be lots of suggestions if you don't have one. Uh, this group is a great resource for finding and repairing vintage equipment, and we encourage vintage radio newcomers and new check-ins will automatically be moved towards the top of the list. We also host a Yahoo group, a web page, actually I think that's been changed a little bit, as well as many files with information regarding vintage single size and equipment. The group offers access to an email reflector, and uh, uh, you can uh, contact Mark uh, NVU6X at eSedona, that's echo, S-E-D-O-N-A dot net, and he'll be glad to get you all hooked up. We also have a live video simulcast via the tiny chat that you can join. Go to tinychat.com slash vintage single sideband, um, and use your call and, and your nickname and select join room. And uh, if you're confused about that, that you think you can get you fixed up if I read it wrong. If you have a webcam and you want to show off your station and your equipment, you can do that. And uh, if you can't hear us very well or you're not hearing a particular station, consider accessing the KFS Web FCR on your computer to hear many more stations when experiencing poor propagation. Propagation seems to be pretty good tonight, at least. I can hear everybody that was uh, calling in. Okay, and if you're not sure where Web SDR is, just Google uh, KFS Web WESR or go or go to Web SDR.org and select the receiver that you want to use. We have a discussion topic of what we call the question of the evening at each round table, and you are invited to participate as part of your check-in. Tonight's question of the evening will be announced shortly. 
If you have any suggestions for uh, questions of the evening, please email them to Mike at k6zsr.com. At the end of each roundtable, there is a Golden Cup Award, and we will award one tonight that is given to a roundtable member who is singled out because of some outstanding, interesting, funny, informative comment made during the check-in or answer to the uh, question of the evening. Before we begin, are there any announcements only of interest to vented single sideband radio topics? Uh, come now, please. Okay, hearing them, I, I, I have, a, I have a, an announcement here. And uh, this uh, coming Saturday is the Claremont Swap Meet uh, in Claremont, California. It's going to be held at the Granite Creek Community Church. And you can uh, Google Claremont Swap Meet. Uh, Grant Creek Community Church, and it starts uh, starts officially at 7, but get there early. Uh, there's quite a few people that came last time, and there's a lot of vintage equipment. That was uh, one of the key parts of it, um, for all different types of vintage equipment, and uh, there was Drake's and uh, Kenwood's and everything uh, everything you can think of. There was a beautiful Drake uh, TR7 and power supply and matching antenna tuner there that went for a couple hundred bucks last, uh, last time. So... If you're interested in vintage equipment or you want to buy, sell, trade, uh, you can come to that. And it lasts for a couple hours, but it's well worth it. So that's, uh, that's my announcement. Let's see, are there, any, are there any other stations wishing to check in at this time? Come now, please. Okay, K6ZTA. Beautiful signal tonight, Bob. Uh, anybody else? Okay, we've got about 15 people checking in, so that's good. Okay, I'm going to announce the question of the evening. And usually I have a whole bunch of these questions of the evening. So I've already written out and stuff, but uh, I'm going to make up a new one tonight and, uh, that nobody knows about, but it's kind of philosophical. And, um, you know, this uh, vintage single side that has been going since I looked it up since 2011, so it's about 12. 12 years old, and so a lot of us who, who were here at the beginning, and I wasn't, I, was, I, I came in about seven years ago, I think, but uh, I think my case of ZSR and a few of the others were here from the beginning, and they stuck around, and there's going to be a reason they stuck around, so tonight's possible or, or, or question is going to be, is how has your interest in vintage signal sideband radio changed your life experience with, uh, with ham radio? I know it's a kind of kind of philosophical, but I, I thought of a few answers. And one is that you know there's a fellowship here that uh, you don't get on some of the other nets. And there's a question of the evening is, is always a, is always an interesting answer to it. So, so those are those are kind of fun. But uh, I've set up all types of uh, of uh, relationships with people uh, uh, that have been members of this this net, and uh, I do appreciate the history of the Bennett single side band, and I, I've learned a lot. And so uh, it's been a great social experience uh, to associate with like-minded people who are kind of all thinking the same way, who can help each other. So that's my two cents. And I'm sure you've had experience uh, uh, with that, too. So I thought we'd just go down and, and, and pat each other on the back and say, hey, this is why I, I'm still here and, and why I like it and, and, uh, and why you want to uh, uh, <coughs> stick around. So the first one to uh, on the hot stick is going to be Glenn, WB6RLC, and then turn it over to R, KB7LOQ. And then we'll turn it over to uh, Lee, K6LLO. And uh, I'll ask you, Lee, what, you know, what, uh, what, um, uh, what's your background and, and kind of why did you uh, want to come to the net? And uh, you're, you're certainly welcome here as, as all new covers are. And that, then after that, turn it over to uh, Max, KJ6HN. And then Max gets back to me, and then we'll, uh, we'll make some comments and go on to the next, uh, next four. Okay, Glenn, take it away. WB6RLC. I hope it's not too hot out there from the seat. From, I almost said my old call, AK6R. It's only 86 degrees here, so and a little bit of breeze, but uh, over to you. Go ahead and take it. Uh, 400 uh, center fit 
Well, frankly, you can work on it. You can fix it, you can tweak it, you can tune it, you can upgrade it. And there's lots of talk about it doing that. Now, there's perhaps only you can do that with uh, modern rigs. But one of the things I like about it, I like it, so I'm going to have to work on it. But I need to do the downside. And I had a really large downside, a separate program for my dad. So I had to clean it out and get rid of it. All righty then, K6 LLO, waiting to, uh, uh, welcome to the group. <laughs> that was a tongue twister. Welcome to the group, Lee, and um, hope you can stick around and join us. We meet here every Tuesday, as the host has said, and uh, so on. And we all have fun. Usually we have fun with the question of the evening, and this is a pretty good one. Um, so let's see, statistics. Um, Max, KJ6HN, actually Samuel Roseanne is my legal name, if you look it up on QRZ. And um, I'm running my uh, Signal 1 mil spec 1030 out into a an Alpha 77SX, and from there out to a homemade um, resonant dipole cut for this frequency. Um, and the uh, antenna is uh, flex weave, 132, I think it is, uh, fibers of tiny, tiny copper, like less than a human hair. Um, and you can tie knots in it. It's really great stuff. So that's it for the promotion on FlexWeed. And um, so on to the question, I suppose. Um, how has single sideband um, interest changed my life in ham radio? Well, like somebody else said previously, it's really about the camaraderie. You know, we're all using similar gear uh, of various vintages, some older, some newer, um, but it's how we interact, and it's a great social group, um, and social groups are just really wonderful. Um, I remember when I retired from the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power six years ago, um, I took a pre-retirement course that was offered, and everybody was there, the, the pension people, the deferred compensation people, um, the health plan people, but, but what was really interesting was the psychiatrist who said, if you don't have a hobby, you better get one, because statistics show that people who retire and don't have a hobby have a shorter life expectancy, and well, right, when after listening to that, to that lecture, I didn't really worry because I figured I had too many hobbies, uh, um, amateur photography, ham radio, playing music with friends, um, internet surfing, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Anyway, I figured I'd be pretty safe from that threat. So, um, so that's what I wanted to say about that. And otherwise, um, I really enjoy ham radio. What a what a great opportunity, and you know it doesn't take much. You just have to prove that you know something about how radio works, depending on what level of license class you want, and then you uh, take the test and you see what happens. So with that, over to let's see. Um, Looking at my list here, I had to make some modifications. Um, either it goes back to the to view Bob AK6R, or it goes over to N6WHK um, from KJ6HN in the group. 
Yeah, it goes back to me. Uh, <clears throat> Thanks, Max. And boy, just a beautiful signal tonight. Your 10 over is just, uh, just blowing it away. Really gorgeous signal tonight. And a great answer, too. Okay, let's see. Let me just kind of go through the group here. Uh, Glenn, uh, nice, uh, nice answers. And uh, we'll, we will look forward to seeing you at the slot meet. Bring all your teams. There's always lots of people looking for two. So that would that'll be great. It'd be good to see you over there. And um, uh, nice signal tonight, too. You were uh, up to 10 also. Uh, KB7 LOQ, only about an F7 here, but uh, actually some uh, good answers. And uh, by the Flagstaff ham fest, uh, boy, I sure would, would like to go to that, too. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not in the schedule, but uh, uh, W7TR actually was at my place here uh, a couple weeks ago because he was looking at a tower trailer that we, uh, that we have. And I'm always looking for new tower trailers in case you ever come across one that, that's available, by the way. And let's see who else. Uh, Lee, you have a great signal in here. You were F9 plus, very good uh, modulation. And oh boy, I just hate to hear about 10 of those rigs going in the trash. That just, uh, you would never have that problem here. I'll tell you, there'll always be somebody that will, that will pick those up one way or the other. And Max, uh, like I say, great signal tonight and, and, a, and a super answer because it's, the camaraderie is really important. And, uh, and, and picking up some knowledge and, and uh, knowing what to do and um, uh, and how to offer that help to others is it's just part of our, you know, being a human. And it's, it's really great. Okay, let's turn it over to W6DQ. And thank you, Dennis, for taking the early, by the way. Forgot to say that. And then turn it over to Lisa, KF6QNG. And uh, then over to uh, Phil in 6WHK. And then over to Ron, K2RP, and then Ron back to me. W6DQ with an outstanding signal as usual from AK6R. Very good. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, AK6R in the vintage single sideband round table. W6DQ here. Dennis out here in Inyo Kern. The uh, southern end of the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. And uh, we had a nice day today. It was uh, it was supposed to be it was supposed to be 101. I think was the high supposed to be today. It hit 102. But it was very pleasant. It was, you know, low humidity, 7% humidity, so it's just wonderful. Clear, a uh, little bit of wind, not too terrible, <clears throat> but uh, it was a nice day. And uh, got out and did some things early this morning when it was still cool, and then later on in the afternoon as it warmed up, I actually got out and did some stuff too, like fixing our electric gate <laughs> that died. Had to replace the batteries in the, in the gate. They gave up the ghost after what, five years or six years? Five years, I guess, they've been uh, <coughs> operating okay, but uh, they, they just gave out. Typical. Anyway, we're running the uh, KWM380, <coughs> pardon me, Alpha 87A. These are going out through the, uh, uh, going out to the uh, uh, horizontal loop, which is a full wavelength on 160, uh, met by a, a Palstar uh, HF Auto Tuner, and a Balan, and uh, I'm using a call it the FM280 microphone. So interesting comments, uh, Bob, about the uh, audio audio quality and the, and the signal. Yeah, you're hitting. You're actually only hitting about 20 over, but it's a beautiful, beautiful signal. You sound great tonight. Everybody else is sounding great too. Uh, I've got the web SDR up and running, but I'm not using it for a change, which is really nice. And uh, Lee, it's great to have you uh, joining us this evening, and uh, nice that you have some vintage gear there that maybe you'll be able to get some of that stuff on the air and join us with that. That would be really awesome. So we always love uh, uh, hearing you folks in the group here. So anyway, um, let's see to the question. Gosh, <laughs> there's so many, so many good answers to this, Bob. It's a good question, and <clears throat> I've always had. Yeah, I've been at this for, what, 50, 54 years this year. I'm still in my 53rd year of industry, so I got my license in 69. And even when I got my license in this year, it really appealed to me. So I had that. My, my first rig was uh, was the surplus World War II radio. So that was pretty vintage at that time. Uh, of course, those are the R5s. But, but, um, 
I've always kind of surrounded myself with vintage gear, and especially Collins. I, I have a, uh, a certain attraction to Collins Radio, and it's because of my Elmers when I was a kid. <laughs> um, all three of my, uh, actually all four of my Elmers, there were four guys that got me into this. W6 QJU, W6 uh, PM, W6 DR, and W6 DQ. All those guys ran Collins here. And uh, W6 QJU in particular said, when you get your license, Dennis, this is what you want to buy. <laughs> and I've never stopped. So, so I'm surrounded by Collins equipment. I love Collins. But, you know, as you guys know, we've got a bunch of other stuff here, too. Not just Collins, but a little bit of everybody. And, and I think that's the cool part of it, is there's such variety. And certainly number one is, is as Glenn mentioned, and as Max and, and uh, others have talked about the camaraderie. You can't beat that. I mean, we're a, you guys, you guys, and gal, we're a family. I mean, we really and truly are a family, and uh, it's more than a community. I, I just think. Uh, just an awesome group. I was trying to think, Bob, when I got involved, um, I was living in Fullerton. Glenn was right about that. And I can't even remember how I found out about the group. I just don't remember. But uh, I remember it was probably not long after the group started. Uh, so it would have been like uh, 2011, 2012. Was quite uh, quite delighted when uh, one, of, one, of, one of the guys asked me if I was interested in being a host. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not fun. But, oh, by the way, uh, to correct you, it's not Tiny Chat anymore. We're on Zoom to be Anywho, but uh, yeah, there's a. It's just, you know, what can you say? I mean, uh, I always look forward to the men every week, or the round table, sorry, and I always look forward especially to the barbecue when we get together and uh, press the flesh. And, so that, that, that's really the best part of all. And, of course, uh, swapping stories, swapping radios uh, with the exchange of cash. The only, the only major effect that it's had on my life, that I, outside of all the things that I've just mentioned, is that collecting vintage radios has uh, <laughs> depleted the bank account many times. <laughs> That's the one, the one downside is, uh, you know, Ham was at, at living up to the acronym of Ham, having any money. <laughs> but great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for hosting tonight, Bob, and uh, we really appreciate it. It's my pleasure to do the early. It's been, it's been fun tonight. So with that, I'm going to send it over to my, uh, my uh, better half here, Ham and QNG. And the Vintage Single Sideband Roundtable, W6DQ. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob, for running the roundtable this evening. Well, uh, let's see, get right to the question. Uh, for me, I was never introduced to uh, Vintage Radio until I met Dennis. So, um, and I can uh, say that it makes my life more better because I've made a whole host of Wonderful people, met a whole host of wonderful people and great friends, all, all, you know, all you guys here, and, you know, the, the barbecues have been wonderful, and everyone has been very good about, uh, you know, accepting me and welcoming me to the group, so, uh-oh, we faltered out, okay. There we go. Good, Lisa. <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, just having met all of you guys and, and being a part of this group, I think, has just uh, been incredible. And uh, the notion of the gold cups, I, I, I must admit, I thought was kind of silly at first when I, you know, would listen. But, uh, you know, it's, it's really kind of cool. And I certainly never, ever, ever thought that I would actually win one of those. Maybe that's why I thought it was so easy. <laughs> but I've had quite a few. Um, <laughs> so uh, my first one, I was just really taken aback by that and, and blown away. But, uh, so 
yeah, I've kept a, a running list of, of my gold cups and what the topic was about. So uh, I still remember the first one was awarded to me by uh, Brian and I think you. And uh, the particular topic was um, there was some change that was going to be made. Um, the FCC was thinking about doing and they were basically going to just grant um, privileges to, uh, I believe, technicians. And I did not feel that that was right. I think people appreciate things more if they had to work for it. And uh, that's what I got my gold cup for. And uh, so anyway, enough of that. So I probably used up my two minutes. So with that, I'm going to send it to Phil, uh, sorry, N6WHK from KF6QND. KF6QND, N6WHK. Go find business there. I was playing with it yesterday. I got this swan. I've had a little problems with it. Between uh, YAT and myself, we got it fixed, mostly YAT. I don't run a tuner. I'm running a coaxial antenna in an inverted D uh, configuration. Running about, oh, looks like according to the meter, about 400 to 450 watts. I don't think I need any more. Uh, I'm copying everybody beautifully. Fantastic night tonight. Uh, I've been uh, playing uh, with radio for a while. I just got into this group here about a year and a half, two years ago. I rather enjoy it because I'm always learning something new. Uh, since I'm not that been around that long, uh, I have a, this rig, I have my uh, 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 heat kit, and I have my uh, Viking, my hammer one, and uh, they're all good rigs, and they're very fun to use. Yeah. 
K2RP in the group, AK6R. Very good, everybody. And uh, nice signal. Ron, you were about an S8. Uh, an N6WHK, you were 20 over. Man, what a great signal and super audio tonight. And uh, let's see who else. Uh, of course, Dennis and Lisa banging in here at uh, 20 over also. So uh, nice, uh, nice signals. And uh, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, and yeah, I think I think everybody agrees that it's it's uh, the camaraderie and the friendship and the, the learning and uh, you know you can trust people uh, here. You get a you get a straight answer, and that you don't get on some other some other places. So I think it's like Lisa said, it's a family of hands. I think that's a that's a great answer and uh, a good one. And yes, I did want to make that up that uh, correction. The website is groups.io. G slash vintage sideband. And uh, uh, K6ZSR, you can uh, go get his email address on QRZ and uh, communicate and, and get, get, get set up on that. I was just reading an old, uh, an old uh, preamble. But uh, it's uh, groups.io slash G slash vintage sideband. I did look at that tonight to see if I was going to be the host. I didn't see it on there. So I'm glad you told me that, Dennis. And uh, here we are. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, we talked about the swap me a little bit. Uh, one thing that, um, you know, I, I just, as, as an aside, because I find this very, very interesting topic, is that um, I give a lot of talks to um, to him radio clubs, and I did the uh, San Diego DX Club, I think, a couple weeks ago. And uh, I was I, I was thrown back to Dayton, and I did it for Flex Radio. I was their dinner host back there for about 600 amps, and we talked about uh, all different topics. But one of the things I brought up was that it was kind of just a little, just a little snitch on a topic that many, many of you may have never heard of before, and it's called the electro culture, E L E T R O, the word culture, and it's about using antennas to grow your plant. I know it sounds crazy. But it, uh, it absolutely works. I've got them all over my rose garden, my vegetable garden, and they're just taking off like crazy. So look it up. Uh, do a little uh, Google on it, and uh, that'll be your that'll be your homework. But uh, you'll you'll find it fascinating. Little antennas that you can make yourself. Put them on your plants, and they grow without fertilizer. They grow uh, without the necessity for fertilizer. Get rid of some of these. The, uh, the bugs and that type of stuff, but uh, it's just uh, pretty good results, and there's quite a few uh, 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 groups on uh, different social media that uh, are uh, dedicated to, to bringing back that technology, which has kind of been suppressed the last uh, 50 to 75 years. Anyway, it's called electroculture, and uh, don't blame me, you get up like I did. Okay. Let's turn it over to Bob, WA9JIB, and then Bob over to Mike, K6ZSR, and then over to Lisa, uh, to Lisa, you already had yours. So then it's going to go to JNY6L, and uh, then turn it over to K6LGL, and then Skip, turn it over to, Va um, to Vaughn, K6ZTA, and then back to me. And that'll finish it up. If anybody else wants to get on, we'll add them on to the end of the list. WA9JIB to take it with a great name, of course, from AK6R. Okay, Bob. This is Bob. AK6R from WA9JIB. Bob here in La Cunada, California. Put over to San Gabriel, northwest corner of Pasadena. And I'm running my helicopter dream station tonight. Goes to the Kenwood MC50 mic. They're nearby into a helicopter's HD32C. B for Bob. Especially for me by Bill Halleck. How about that? And I uh, got his mate, the SX-115, doing the receive duty. Uh, I got an R-48 speaker. And, uh, and let's see the antennas, the usual 90 meter uh, dipole inverted V hanging off the 35 foot mat. Okay, a couple uh, comments to individuals here. Art, well, everybody's coming in pretty good. Art, you were a little weak, but I got it all. Glad you're doing better. Hey, you really need a helicopter, Zan. Uh, not that he's just saying. <laughs> so, uh, and I know where you can get one. So if you're feeling up to it and are still interested in that amp, uh, you just let me know. 
Okay, uh, but great to hear you back, and I think that you're doing better. Uh, note to Glenn, uh, I've been working a little bit on that R100A that we swapped, and uh, let's see, it's missing some parts. Uh, I was missing some tubes. I had all the tubes that it needed except a 6 Alpha Zulu 8, or a couple of them would be good. So if you're going to uh, get rid of a bunch of uh, tubes, you could, if you've got a couple of 6 Alpha Zulu 8, 9, 10 minis, uh, please save them for me, Glenn. No hurry. We'll probably meet up at Mike's in, uh, in September. And uh, also, uh, a couple of these, the two sockets with chicken and uh, printed circuit boards were missing. They had been in there. You could tell from the bottom that they've been soldered in. I think I have one that'll fit in there, but I need two. So if anybody's got any of those, the kind of 9 mini sockets that fit in circuit boards, and they have to have the metal pin with the ground lug coming off. JID uh, could use one or two of those. So, uh, yeah, N4 DLA, Matt and I have been talking to. He's got one, so he's got me motivated to start working on their radio. So, anyway, uh, yeah, a couple of sockets and uh, six Alpha Zulu 8. And a note to everybody, but especially Dennis, uh, a, friend, uh, a neighbor of mine, a gal, um, he's got a boyfriend who lives in Lancaster, and he wants to unload a radio called a Scott SLR-F, an old Navy, World War II era Navy thing, it's got a VLF band on it, low radiation, so it wouldn't be protected uh, by other ships, and I think it's a 3 d but the dark thing weighs 90 pounds. Uh, Dennis, if you're interested, you're not that far from Lancaster. And if, uh, I've already tried to promote it to Tom, W6TOM, W7QHO, uh, KD6TKX, and NI6Q. And uh, nobody has said they want it. So, uh, if it, and and I, I just don't have room for it. So it's going to go in the landfill if nobody grabs it. But I will ask the guy to harvest the two for me uh, before it goes in the landfill. So, uh, if anybody's interested in Scott SLR, they can reach me through uh, my, my uh, email. Is good on that Okay, on to the question. Uh, yeah, the friendship's always uh, top the list. Uh, we said a lot about that, so I won't go into to that too much. Uh, I will also say that uh, during COVID, the COVID years, when you can hardly see anybody, <laughs> Who did I see? I saw my girlfriend and I saw uh, a bandmate. And that was our social life for a few years. But I would, uh, you know, between the Venice Side Band Round Table on Tuesday nights and the AM Band, that was a good part of my social life for three years. And I really look forward to being with these guys. So that changed my life a little bit back too. I might have gone to raising mad otherwise. So uh, anyway, I really look forward to the net uh, and the round table for COVID and now that's over. Uh, I still look forward to it, so how about that? Uh, I love hardware. To me, they're just toys, whether it's my toy train, my vehicle, radios. And even though I'm an aerospace engineer and it's been 46 years, I've really never had a hardware job. Uh, my specialty is orbit mechanics. So, uh, you know, my hardware is always out in space. So when I want to play with toys, get my hands on hardware, I've got to come home and play with, play with the toys I have here. And, and uh, vintage radios just, uh, uh, just make that just uh, I learned a lot doing that. And also, I wanted to say it does help me in my career because I have at times worked for our tracking network and on the network. Being involved with radio and vintage radio, I think it has helped me a lot in my career too. So anyway, that's a big answer to a little uh, to, uh, to a big question. And with that, I will turn it to Mike. K6 ZSR WA Yeah, okay, fine, uh, Bob. Nice signal here tonight. Uh, WA9 JIB in the group from K6 uh, ZSR. This is Mike in uh, Santa Barbara. And uh, tonight we're running the high gain 3750, the model 3750 without the uh, uh, 
without the drifting uh, <laughs> uh, external VFO. I gotta work on that. But anyway, uh, that's all going up to a uh, uh, an inverted V there, and then also into an amplifier running about uh, well, the legal limit, let's say. And uh, so that's the uh, oh, and the and the microphone's a Shure 44. That's it. And um, a very nice uh, question of the evening, uh, Bob, and uh, uh, I had a little bit of time here, of course, to reflect on it, and uh, for me, it's, uh, it's a friendship of all the, the good people here. Uh, it, it's, uh, I've made, and I mentioned this actually uh, at the last barbecue that we had here, that this is, uh, out of all the, the, the uh, all of the clubs, uh, I mean, there's probably been five or six of them over my ham radio career, which uh, now spans, uh, uh, what are we talking about, uh, close to 70 years here. And, uh, but this, this is undoubtedly uh, and unequivocally the best from a, French, a friendship uh, standpoint. And uh, just having one thing in common that we all love are these vintage radios. Uh, you can combine that, and uh, that's hard to beat. It's hard to believe 12 years. And, uh, gosh, we've had some good people go through here that's uh, not with us anymore and that are truly missed. Uh, K5PZ uh, beat and, and my good friend Bernie, HDY, WA6, uh, H, W6 HDY, and then recently Bob, K6VDX, who never, uh, that K6VDX never missed, <laughs> never missed a barbecue. And his last one, he was really suffering terribly. But that's how much he enjoyed uh, coming here and meeting with everybody. Uh, I enjoy the club. My background is uh, non-technical. I came from a real estate and finance background. Uh, so everything that I've picked up uh, electronically on this club, I, I, I owe to others. Uh, uh, like my good friend Mark and you 6X or Dennis W6DQ, uh, off the top of my head, uh, uh, Brian and I6Q, or or if I have any RFI problems, I go to Bob, AK6R. <laughs> so everything I've learned uh, here on this, uh, uh, on vintage radios and repairs and everything, it's come from all the fine people that are in this club. And uh, it, it sure helped me along the way. And uh, just uh, so far, looking forward to the barbecues that are coming up and, uh, and the camaraderie uh, that we have. So there you have it. And I just want to, uh, 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 to sum it up, uh, I always remember K2 LMQ Carl. It was less than a year. Uh, so this had to be in 2011 sometime. Uh, Paul uh, just came out of the frequency, and uh, he checked in, and this guy, he was just, he just came unglued. Uh, he said, I, I can't believe it, I stumbled onto this. <laughs> I don't know how we found out about it, but of course he had a ton of, uh, of vintage radios, and this was like the Nirvana. This was the like the big Kahuna. When he stumbled into this thing, he just got so exuberant and was just saying thank you for letting me in, and he was going on and on. And I happened to be the host that evening, and we had just started the uh, question of the evenings. And uh, so I, 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 I awarded him the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Golden Cup just for his enthusiasm. And, of course, uh, everyone that knows Paul, he's just been in there. Uh, uh, I'm surprised he's not in there this evening. And, uh, but he's, uh, he's always checking in with a lot of energy, a lot of passion and energy. And I think that's what a lot, everybody in this group has. They show a lot of passion uh, towards this hobby. And it just shows, and that's why it's lasted as long as it has. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have an inner core group here that checks in all the time and stuff. But for the most part, it's uh, uh, I, I am just surprised that it's held at, not only held together, but it's gotten better over the years. So there you have it. That's my uh, my two cents there. So uh, now I'm sure Jay is going to have a lot more and uh, uh, to say about it than I have. So over to you, Jay. NY6L in the group from K6ZSR. All right, very good, uh, Mike. Good signal up here, boy. Really good modulated signal here and sounding good on the calling test line here. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, um, yeah, I'm putting up a little over 100 watts here, so hopefully I'm getting out okay. Well, where do I begin? Well, my first vintage rig uh, was actually a hand-me-down G2 MP301F. I did about 15 to 20 watts to suspect me. Uh, well, about the early to, early to mid-1980s. And um, I, I had fun with that radio, and for some reason, I got rid of it, and I got another one that's even better condition um, from DJ. But uh, getting to the uh, uh, question of the evening here, uh, putting that, um, I, uh, I heard about the Vincent Sight Van Nett, um, I think it was mentioned, and um, boy, it really perked me up, and I tell you, I've just been enjoying not only having uh, working vintage sideman equipment is the people that are out there and my hands off to every single one of you. It's just like like everybody else said. It's just like family, a lovely fellowship and camaraderie um, and uh, straight answers. And I tell you, I'll never forget this. Is when I first got on the vintage sideband net and I cured or found that hook problem with that SPT 33, which I still have today. Um, I tell you, I just almost wanted to pull my hair out when I found out it was the a factory defect that the neon bulb was wired on the wrong side of the AC port uh, inside the radio of all things. Uh, well, and that, uh, that took care of business. And flip the plug around, and no more humps. <laughs> After rebuilding the power supply, checking the audio circuit, uh, doing whatever I could, and I couldn't find the, the little gremlin was a miswired neon bulb. And, and then I got the golden cup on that. I'll never forget that. Um, a lot of fun out here. Um, I tell you, I just uh, really look forward to getting on here uh, as much as I can. And um, now that I'm retired, you know, I, I'll get on here as, as often as I can. And running this vintage gear is just uh, just, a, just a hoot. Um, and also, it's uh, easier to work on than this uh, newer high-tech stuff. I mean, yeah, it's neat and all that, but somehow the, uh, the warmth of tooth and salt state and, you know, components that you can get to and replace, that's a lot of fun, too. All right, well, enough said. Over to Skip, K6LGL, NY6L in his area. Okay, thank you very much, Jay. And my channel. And the lizard sideband. Round table. It's a little green light sitting in Santa Monica by the bay. I'm on my uh, 902DM, which is the last of the series. It started with the 101 by Yasu. Yeah, they learned from everybody, including Collins and Drake and many American manufacturers and then the community of him. So this was the last uh, hybrid. So we have the 12BY7 uh, to 6146Bs. And uh, the on the second year. Yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah, it's accidentally touched my dial on a little bit. So now you know. What brought me back I, for many, many years was uh, doing my DX chasing and uh, activities, primarily the DX activities, and 
ceremonies here from uh, from uh, kind of a, 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 a resemblance from everybody. There was um, it looked like everybody uh, really enjoyed uh, being a uh, a, a ash asked as a member of, uh, of uh, given charges uh, uh, as we are all listening to the, uh, uh, the questions and stuff. And uh, we all become a family of hams, and our community has, has done that. Uh, we've gotten a, a, a re rejoining uh, uh, learning experience. Our friendships have uh, grown between all of us, uh, doing different uh, aspects. Uh, there's a variety of experiences that we've all had in the past, but we're all beginning to be, uh, have uh, common um, and welcome uh, joys uh, with uh, with all the people who've, uh, who've uh, been uh, checking in. And uh, there's a love of all the uh, radios and, and the vintage things that have happened, and uh, it's been a good uh, good way to do it. Um, well, I listened to just about everybody, and I wanted to. Um, uh, a couple of the people said that uh, that they did get the family of hams as, as one of their closest uh, 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 laid. But what I wanted to do, I think, is give the uh, uh, the equate the uh, golden cup tonight to uh, to uh, Kasich ZSR. Uh, he's made a great explanation of uh, of, uh, of common uh, interest, uh, how it's, how all of this is. Uh, into his, uh, his social his social life, how he's been around for so long, for so many years. He's kind of been uh, one of the guys who's loaded uh, by putting all this stuff together for such a long time. And uh, so I wanted to um, give him the, uh, uh, the associate uh, award tonight of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, of the award. And so go ahead and take it, uh, K6SR, give us a little... A little speech here, and then uh, we'll uh, call it a night and uh, go from there. K6 ZSR to take it from AK6R. Okay, Bob, very good. AK6R and the group, K6 ZSR. Well, thank you so much. Oh, it's been a long time since I got a uh, golden cup, and I uh, really appreciate it, especially for this topic. So, oh, my gosh, uh, I, I, I just love this club so much. Uh, uh, I, 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 what I said, I really meant, Bob, and uh, I just uh, looking forward to uh, to our get together here at my house again. Uh, I September. I can't remember the date now, but uh, starting next week, I'm going to start announcing it. So, and uh, you know, we got a, a real a core group that comes every year, and uh, we catch up up on everything, and uh, so I'm just really looking forward to it and uh, thank you bob for hosting and to uh and for, uh, this, uh you know putting out this uh this question of the evening which you know it's getting harder and harder <laughs> to get these things going these questions you know but uh this one was a lot a one that was very long overdue and it's so good to, uh, to reflect on it you know just to reflect on everything and uh so that's good we should revisit this once in a while to, <laughs> to remember all of this so okay bob thanks again uh in case six hour in the group from k6 nsr K6 ZSR in the group, AK6 R. Well, very good. And thank you, Mike, and uh, thank you for uh, for keeping us all together over the over the years. And uh, hopefully, we'll have many more uh, years after that. And uh, Glenn, uh, WB6 RLC, and Jade, NY6 L. I'm sure we'll see you at the um, the uh, swap meet on Saturday. And yeah, look forward to that. And uh, the rest of you uh, will be. Um, We'll be on uh, here next week, of course, and maybe some of the other nets uh, at night time. So, 73 is all. Thank you for participating and giving us your comments, and uh, I'm so glad we have everybody here, and uh, we're all having a good time with uh, uh, with these uh, <clears throat> with these uh, meetings together. And uh, tell your friends, and if you have new people who want to join, where there's always a welcome for them too. So, 73 is all. Uh, have a good night, and it's uh, time for us to. Uh, Time for us to go get that beef for dinner here. So AK6R, 73 is off.